Hi everyone. How are you today? I hope you are always healthy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to review a sampling of the many reports of finds of very tall human remains on this continent, and more. I got this from a book by Richard J. Dewhurst, called, The Ancient Giants Who Ruled America, The Missing Skeletons and the Great Smithsonian Cover-Up. Please check the description to know more, there are many interesting topics there, and not all of them can be covered here. I know that my video quality is far from good, but I hope the content is understandable. Some might say that I'm being repetitive by discussing this. But that's the whole point. This is proof that a small occult elite of the history to fit their narrative. Anyway, I also have a Telegram channel. There, I will share various information that I cannot share here. Don't forget to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel, the link is also in the description box below. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. The following newspaper account from an 1870 edition of the Ohio Democrat postulates that the giant, whose skeleton was found with a nine-foot-long sword, must have stood 18 feet tall in his stockings. It then alleges that the skeleton was shipped to New York. Since this account is highly speculative to say the least, let's just say this was one big skeleton and leave it at that. Ohio Democrat, January 14, 1870. On Tuesday morning last, while well, Mr. William Thompson, assisted by Mr. Robert R. Smith, was engaged in making an excavation near the house of the former, about half a mile north of West Hickory, preparatory to erecting a derrick, they exhumed an enormous helmet of iron, which was corroded with rust. Further digging brought to light a sword, which measured nine feet in length. Curiosity incited them to enlarge the hole, and after some little time, they discovered the bones of two enormous feet. Following up the lead, they had so unexpectedly struck, in a few hours' time, they had unearthed the well-preserved remains of an enormous giant, belonging to a species of the human family, which probably inhabited this and other parts of the world, at the time of which the Bible speaks when it says, and there were giants in those days. The helmet is said to be of the shape of those among the ruins of Nineveh, the bones of the skeleton are remarkable white. The teeth are all in their places, and all of extraordinary size. These relics have been taken to Tyanesta, where they are visited by large numbers of people daily. When his giant ship was in the flesh, he must have stood 18 feet tall in his stockings. These remarkable relics will be shipped to New York early next week. The joints of the skeleton are now being glued together. These remains were found about 12 feet under the surface of a mound, which had been thrown up probably centuries ago, and which was not more than 3 feet above the level of the ground around it. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. New York Times, May 5, 1885. Centerburg, Ohio. Licking County has been for years a favorite field for students of Indian history. Last week, a small mound near Homer was opened by some schoolboys. Today, further search was made, and several feet below the surface of the earth, in a large vault with stone floor and bark covering, were found four huge skeletons, three being over seven feet in length, and the other, a full eight feet. The skeletons lay with their feet to the east on a bed of charcoal in which were numerous burned bones. About the neck of the largest skeleton were a lot of stone beads. The grave contained about 30 stone vessels and implements, the most striking being a curiously wrought pipe. It is said to be the only engraved stone pipe ever found. A stone kettle, holding about a gallon in which was a residue of saline matter, bears evidence of much skill. Their bows, a number of arrows, stone hatchets, and a stone knife are among the implements that were found at the site. A 
Ohio Morning Sun News Herald, April 14, 1904. A giant skeleton of a man has been unearthed at the Wilverton Farm, a short distance from Topecano City, Ohio. It measures 8 feet from the top of the head to the ankles, the feet being missing, says this newspaper reporter. The skull is large enough to fit as a helmet over the average man's head. This skeleton was one of seven, buried in a circle, the feet of all being towards the center. Rude implements were near. The skeletons are thought to be those of mound builders. This is one of several accounts that I ran across in my research of a giant skeleton being buried with a panther. The ritual context of these animal burials has never been properly studied or understood. In this account, the contents of 11 mounds were said to have been shipped to the Smithsonian for study. Cincinnati Commercial Gazette, September 26, 1889. Soon after the 1st of March, relics were collected to be placed on loan to the Smithsonian Institution at Washington, D.C. During the last two months, 11 mounds have been opened and their contents taken to the museum and placed on exhibition. These mounds vary in height, from 8 to 30 feet, are generally conical in shape, and contain all the way from 300 to 10,000 square yards of dirt. They were built by the aborigines of this country hundreds of years ago, to serve as burial places for the distinguished dead. They are generally placed near some stream in a valley, and not infrequently on high points of land, which command a good view of the country, but the larger ones are in the valleys. These mounds are usually compassed of clay, sometimes of sand, and often have layers of charcoal or burnt clay in them. These layers are often as brightly colored as if they had been painted. About five feet above this layer, or nine feet from the summit of the mound, was a skeleton of a very large individual, who had buried by the side of it the bones of the panther. Whether the person had killed the panther and it was buried with him as an honor, or whether the panther had killed the individual, one cannot say. 43 Mounds Opened This much, however, can be said, that in 43 Mounds Opened, no find of this nature has been made. It is therefore quite interesting and important. The skull of this panther was very large, teeth very long and sharp. It would take a mound builder of a great deal of nerve to attack a beast of this size if he had nothing but a stone hatchet and bow and arrows to defend himself with. Regular skeleton found next to giant. Just below this skeleton and lying on the layer of buried bones, was a medium-sized personage who had buried around his neck in the manner of a necklace, between his upper and lower jaw, 147 bone and shell beads. The shell beads were made from the thick part of conch and pyrolus shells. These shells must have been carried from the Atlantic Ocean, as they are ocean shells, and not found inland, or the tribe to which the man belonged may have traded with tribes near the ocean and thereby got the beads. What do you think about this video? Please like and share this video if you like it, so that more people are aware of what is happening in this world. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this, they have done a lot for us all. Please subscribe to watch the next upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.